Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Jim Terrier, with his friends in a Congo City pub, where they are chatting and sipping cocktails. Abruptly, the TV shows news about mining corporations terminating their contracts with the Democratic Republic of the Congo, due to growing corruption. Jim and his girlfriend, Annie, wake up in a residence, Annie needs to leave for work. He insists her to stay for a bit, but she has to go as she has a lot of work at office. Jim is seen patrolling with his team in the following scene. There, he notices two cars coming across the field. These two cars are Felix and the team from Cox. Jim notices something off as he watches them via binoculars. Jim then gives his squad the command to begin the operation. Felix visits a hospital to meet Annie where she is checking on her patients. He then asks Annie if he can drop her off at home, but she says no as Jim will be dropping her off. Felix seems to have a deep affection for Annie. Next, we see Jim and his group planning the minister's execution in a car. Meanwhile, one of the crew members asks about the extraction strategy, and their chief informs them that Felix has organized everything and that we will be using a plane for extraction. Jim is then seen arranging his sniper rifle on a window of a five-star hotel. Looking little nervous, he begs Felix to watch over Annie in case the mission doesn't go as planned while he is speaking with his staff. Felix then assures him that he would look after Annie to the fullest extent. The minister is among a convoy of vehicles that are approaching from the front when Jim, armed with his rifle, is seen standing at the window. As his team member confirms that the minister is sitting on the left side of a car, Jim loads the gun and fires, killing the minister. He then leaves from there. Now, riots in the country have broken out once more, according to news that is broadcast on TV channels everywhere. Eight years later, Jim is seen beach surfing. He is having a conversation with his group about the advancements and changes that have occurred in the field. He's been employed here for almost a year now. The following scene finds Jim touring the area with his team and assistant Eugene to see what's been developed nearby. They pull their car over to assess the situation at a nearby village. Jim is having trouble fixing a machine that breaks down while it is in use. Some cars enter the village with criminals carrying guns and weapons and those criminals are there searching for Jim. Jim's crew is attacked by a goon as soon as they notice him. As a professional assassin now, Jim kills all the goons, with the aid of his assistant Eugene. Jim now seeks Eugene about his well-being. And adds, I will never forget this thing, you did a very good job and you saved my life. Jim gives Eugene instructions to enter the compound, secure all of the workers there, and seal it until he receives more instructions. Jim then leaves in his car. Jim appears to be a little unconscious while driving his car. When Jim returns home in the following scene, he is a little anxious and has flashbacks of the previous incident in which he killed the minister. Next, we see Jim seated in an aircraft, reflecting on the incident and writing down some clues on a piece of paper. After that, he takes off directly for London, where he is seen crossing a bridge. Jim is shown in an apartment, where he opens a black packet that he took out of a safe to examine some private documents. He goes to meet his friend Terry and tells him that he moved to London after leaving Congo, and asks Terry about who else was aware of Project Calvary? Jim informs him that three men came specifically to kill him in Congo. Terry reveals that only the clients were aware of this, including you, Bryson, and me, all of us being brothers. Other than this, only Felix was aware of this. He also had direct communication with the client. Terry adds that since Felix was in Barcelona the last time he spoke with him, they should meet up to find out who is causing this tension if that is the case. Jim also cautions Terry to act with care because they might attack him as well. Jim leaves the building, and surveillance begins on him. He enters a club where he meets Stan, a member of his team, while some people are watching him. Jim is informed by Stan that he thinks this is just a misunderstanding. Here, Jim is positive that there are people out to get him, and he wants to find out who they are. After a few of the drunken customers misbehave toward him, Jim severely beat one of them, the two of them flee the bar. He faints as he exits the bar, and Stan helps him. Jim appears in the hospital in the following scene getting his mind scanned. His physician informs him that he has Alzheimer's disease, that his brain is not functioning well, and that he is no longer able to handle stress of any kind. Jim tells his friend that he must travel to Barcelona and find a safe house there. At first, Stan says no, but Jim eventually persuades him, and Stan agrees to assist him. Stan asks Jim to meet some people who will assist him in his mission when he travels to Barcelona. Jim finds everything he needs, including a gun and paperwork, when he checks into a hotel in Barcelona. Jim starts watching Felix, and when he notices that Annie is with him, he starts to pursue her. Subsequently, Jim attends a press conference where Felix is the speaker. He interrupts Felix mid-sentence, causing Felix to become uneasy. After that, 
Felix asks him why was he there, as they meet in his private cabin. Jim tells Felix that he had been the target of an attempted murder in the Congo, which surprises Felix greatly. Felix threatened Jim, saying, if you think you will take Annie, then you are in a big misunderstanding. Next, we see Jim walking in a restaurant. He is joining Felix and Annie for dinner. When Annie sees Jim at the dinner with Felix, she becomes a little emotional and uneasy. Felix acts inappropriately toward her and Jim during their conversation, and Jim pushes Felix. After Annie leaves, Jim follows her. Jim tries to make Annie understand after apologizing, but at this point, she is extremely angry and she leaves. Next, we see Jim taking a bath in his apartment when he hears someone knock on the gate. He grabs his gun and investigates, discovering it's Annie. She asks Jim why has he come here to which Jim explains the whole situation. She tells him to meet for lunch tomorrow as Felix has some information. Jim comes to his mansion and meets Felix and notices Annie not being there. Felix tells him that she is horse riding. Felix hands Jim a document and informs him that two of the three shooters have died and that you are the only one left. Jim then tells him that the whole team is coming there after sensing something is off. Subsequently, Felix heads to the restroom, and Jim checks his phone to discover that he was providing information to someone about Jim. Then Jim beats up Felix and warns Annie that all of their lives are in danger. Jim intervenes to save Felix as gunmen open fire from outside. However, Felix raises his hand, at which point the gunman fires, killing Felix. Jim then informs Annie that Felix is dead and that they have to leave the area. After that, Jim and Annie hide in the basement, where Jim uses a knife to kill a shooter who comes to check on them. Jim also removes his gun and all of his ammunition and puts on his bulletproof vest. After that, Jim and Annie hide in a bathroom where they engage in an intense battle with the shooter. Jim, a skilled assassin, decisively defeats everyone, seizes the car, and leaves with Annie. Then they go to a place to change the car, and she tells him that she won't leave until he tells her everything, who these people are and what's going on. Jim then explains to her that about the situation in Congo. Jim apologizes to Annie and they leave from there. When Jim gets to his apartment, he tells Annie to keep the car driving and to leave after 15 minutes if he doesn't return. Jim then uses a back door to enter his apartment. He notices that a bomb has been placed there and some people are watching his apartment from the apartment next door, so he refuses the bomb and departs. After installing the same bomb at the gate, Jim now enters his apartment through the main gate once more and looks out the window to see if anyone is approaching. The bomb explodes as soon as the shooter opens the main gate, and Jim and Annie drive away. He tells her that a friend will assist them. Jim and Annie visit and spend some time at their friend's house, where they also have dinner. Then, after Annie goes to sleep, Jim gets ready to leave and tells his friend to take Annie to the police if he doesn't hear from him. The next scene takes place in Gibraltar, where Jim shows up. Jim's friend then speculates that Terry might be involved in all of this because everyone who was involved in this mission is dead. Jim then begins conversing with an unidentified person while sitting outside the Interpol office. After some time, the unidentified person hands him a card, which he checks to find it as an Interpol card. Shortly after that, Terry and his team emerge, and Jim spots him. Jim gives Terry a call and leaves a message asking to meet at the theme park. And then Terry shows up and they meet there. Jim pulls Terry aside to talk as he is suspicious. Terry is about to give him an injection, that's when he grabs Terry and leads him to the side. When Jim asks Terry why he did it, he responds that they didn't want to take the risk. They had to kill everyone for this reason. Jim's health deteriorates during this time, and he begins to feel lightheaded. Jim then shows Terry a document and declares he has all the proofs. After Terry declares that it is no longer useful, Jim abruptly shoots at him. When Jim is about to kill him, Terry apologizes to him, saying that there was nothing else he could have done. Jim is shot at by the gunman, and Terry runs away. The gunman make a valiant attempt to kill Jim but as soon as he leaves and texts Stan for assistance, he fades out. Jim leaves and calls Terry as soon as he realizes what's going on. The moment that Terry answers and says, I was waiting for your call, talk to your friend Stan, Annie and Stan find themselves in the Terry's grasp. When Jim tries to talk to Stan, he tells him to kill him as a favor, and Terry becomes irritated, and shoots Stan. Jim feels very helpless when Terry threatens to kill Annie. Jim tells him that they will meet in a public place, but Terry doesn't understand why. Jim then sends Terry a video file that contains a video of the mission in which Terry is giving instructions to everyone. Terry gets scared after seeing the video and agrees to meet Jim in a public place. Jim gives him a call and tells him to send Annie out on her own, saying he will come to him with the notebook and all the proofs. Terry follows Jim's instructions and arrives at the stadium with his entire team and Annie. Jim begins taking out each shooter one at a time. In the meantime, he is shot by the second gunman, 
so he immediately retreats to a room and gets first aid. The third shooter tells Terry that they are both dead as soon as he realizes it, at which point Terry goes out with Annie. Annie, in the meantime, gets rid of Terry and leaves the area. Jim and the third shooter engage in an aggressive fight during which they repeatedly stab one another before Jim ultimately kills the third shooter. Here, Jim is lying down with severe injuries when he calls Annie to him through the rope. As Terry approaches from behind and comes toward Annie cautiously, he threatens to kill her. After Jim shoots Terry, Annie climbs up. After she approaches Jim, a bull blows up the Terry. Jim then calls the unidentified man who gave him the card, and he turns over all the evidence and takes them both into custody. This is when the Interpol police arrive. Jim is seen in the hospital speaking with the inspector and consenting to work with him to obtain all the information. The TV channel flashes news in the following scene announcing that everyone involved in the operation has been taken into custody. Annie is seen working with the underprivileged in a village as part of her social work. She notices that Jim has also arrived after serving his time, and they are both relieved to see and embrace. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.